Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. I have, uh, as you can imagine, after many years in ministry, preached on this passage any number of times, and there are a couple of pieces that I, that truly move me. Uh, and uh, the first is this clear sense that Jesus is out and about. He is going out to see people. He's uh, going outside the city centers into the country to, to visit with people. And there he is doing miraculous work, uh, which is really contrary to the time to say, no, it's actually out here in the world where miraculous things are happening. He's curing the sick, he's casting out demons and restoring people to their life in community. But as he does this, right, he, what we're told in this gospel lesson is that he is seeing so much pain and suffering as he goes, right? So much. And so he says the harvest is those kind of classic words, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are, are few, so pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers and so he does that right he sends out this is the calling of the disciples in matthew's gospel so we get the long list of those who are calling and going and he gives them power to do the same work right that he was up to now what's important uh, here i think to understand my reading this week is for years i have preached on this passage believing that the uh, that kind of old gospel traditional way of reading the passage, which is uh, the kingdom of God uh, is is going to be full. <laughs> the harvest is going to be full of people in the kingdom of God. That's how I've read it, right? The harvest is plentiful. Send out labors, gather everybody into the kingdom. I've read that over and again. I've preached it. I've preached on how God's praying for us to do it over and over again. But this, I have no clue what happened other than I had kind of a, uh, what I would suggest is a Holy Spirit moment this week. And I want to offer you what, what I heard when I read the gospel the first time on Monday. And that is that God looks out and sees the pain and suffering in the world, just like I told you. He's moved. We're told he's actually, the, the word is that he's moved in his stomach. That's how upset he is, right? You, you all know that feeling. When you get so upset, your stomach gets upset. That's the word that's actually used to describe how Jesus uh, approaches this. And what's interesting uh, to me is that uh, he then says the harvest is plentiful. But I, I, I thought, what if it's not the harvest of the kingdom of God he's talking about? What if it's the harvest of the world that we live in and it's the pain and suffering he's talking about? That's who need laborers, you see. And I know uh, we've all traveled the last few years together, and some of us have traveled longer than me in this world, and some of us have not in this room. But I find it very difficult for me to stand here and not say, the world dishes out some hard stuff. And the world disappoints quite often. Uh, as Paul reminds us, right, we put all of our, our sense of things and hope in things that don't pay off in the end. Uh, and that uh, that harvest just keeps on giving people. And so we need the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> he says, right? Like, I, I'm saying, right? Like, Mark says, kingdom of heaven has come near. A repeated passage in Mark. In Luke, what does it mean to be in the kingdom of heaven? Actually, it means to visit the sick, cure the sick, to visit those in prison. It means to release those who are bound, like the... Uh, those who have possession, it means to whatever, and in our world, we could say it's all kinds of stuff that possesses us, right? And that uh, people uh, need to 
receive a bit of hope, a bit of kingdom of God message, not just an action, because that's important to do the action, but as Paul in Romans reminds us in hope as well. And so we spend a lot of time in our Episcopal church, I think, actually talking about, about how we need to get out there and work. And I'd like to spend the rest of uh, the few minutes I have with you talking about what it means to bring hope to a harvest uh, in the world that we receive. Because I think that's part of what Paul's talking about. What does it mean to be a prophet of hope? Uh, and the truth is, most days, I think most of us are trying our very best to do our very best for God and for our families, and we're just trying to make it. But sometimes we don't know what to say. What does it mean to actually offer hope? We're good at offering optimism, which is someday in the future it's going to be better, <laughs> right? That's optimism. But that's not what Paul offers, nor Jesus, nor Moses, nor any of the prophets. They do not actually promise that it's going to be better. Because all of them know that the world will continue to give as the world gives. And so what we don't need is optimism. What we need in a broken and sinful world is actually hope. And the first thing a prophet of hope has to come to terms with is it wasn't better back then. And most likely, it'll be the same in the future. <laughs> and the prophet of hope also should be honest with those that they speak with about, out of love, out of their own concern for how we could make our lives different. I think that's where we spend a lot of time. What we don't spend a lot of time on is saying, actually, you're not alone in this. God's with you, Jesus is with you, church is with you. You all in this room know very well this church family is with you. You're not alone. And it may still be hard, but you won't have to go alone. The other thing is that God has already gone before you. Whether we look at the Old Testament, God goes before in the pillar of the cloud, right? God prepares the way for the Israelites. God continues that work, uh, whether we look at the prophets of hope while they're in Babylon, it doesn't matter where you look. God is always ahead of the people, and that's hopeful. It means that tomorrow, the next day, the month after, on and on, God is there waiting for us. God is already ahead of us. No matter what happens, God is present into the future. And the last thing is that we are, and Paul is very clear about this, uh, members of God's family. And that that can't be taken away. That actually, no matter what you all do as you leave this place, no matter how bad or broken uh, it gets, <laughs> you're gift of forgiveness has already been made by Jesus on the cross. That doesn't, as Paul is quick to remind you, mean you just go out and do whatever you want, <laughs> right? But it does mean, as we Episcopalians say, all you have to do is come back to the Lord, and the Lord waits. But there is hope in the fact that as we go about our lives, we know that forgiveness is present in every step, every word, every act that we take. It is just for us to claim it as our own, as members of the family of God. So as you go about the good work that you do this week, as you go about your life, perhaps as you bump into people, you might offer a bit of hope. And not just optimism, uh, a bit of hope. Uh, that God loves the people you come into contact with, that God cares about the world in which we live. God knows how hard it is, having been here God's self, but also having traveled for eons with the people of Israel and Christians everywhere. I just think a little hope is what's needed. Because how can we look at the world today and not be moved in our gut? and see 
that indeed the harvest of this world is plentiful and we just need some new laborers with some hope to go into it. So pray today that the Lord of the harvest, that is the kingdom of God, will send laborers like ourselves to those places where it is most needed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.